So, um, did that video this morning, and um, I get home today after work to find out that there's a for sale sign in front of our house. Um, this isn't our house, we rent. And the landlord, who has been very good to us, uh, who is a Catholic, um, died recently, and his wife is now the landlady, and she's moving the ball along really quickly. We had the other day a real estate lady come out here to look at the house, <coughs> and um, she mentioned to us that she was going to get a hold of us to see about us buying this house, which we can't do that, uh, because my wife and I have been very unwise. We, we don't make a lot of money together, and um, all our money goes for, like, you know, bills. And um, and you know, we we would not we we won't go for a loan. Yeah, because when you look at the uh, credit institution or credit as they call it. <laughs> uh, when you tie back the banking system here, uh, especially today in America, there's always a tie to the Jesuits one way or another. And as far as getting a mortgage, a death pledge, right? Not going to happen. And to our own fault, my wife and I have zero savings. We live paycheck to paycheck. Our landlord was very gracious to us. Uh, and more so, the Lord has been very merciful and gracious to my wife and I. <coughs> we pay $850 of rent in rent <coughs> a month. And we live in Woodstock, Illinois. And the real estate has just rising and rising with all the um, fiat currency, the printed money that's being pushed into this financial system here in America. And it's eventually here going to collapse. It really is. But, like I said, the uh, real estate lady said she was going to get back to us. Never did. And they want $109,000 for this house, as is. And um, we have not been served papers or anything, but the um, it's getting pretty interesting, so to speak, because um, my wife and I have nothing. And my wife and I are not in total agreement in what, where we should live and what not and what kind of house we would like. And that's a problem. Please pray for us. But, um, you reap what you sow. We do our best not to spend uh, needlessly, and we work really hard to not live beyond our means. And... We just, uh, we have nothing. Like I said, getting a loan from a bank that has ties to the Jesuits, this banking system, this credit system. <laughs> what is your credit based off of, huh? When you look into the, especially the modern banking system here in America, and I'm sure in other parts of the world, there are always links to the Jesuits in one way or another, to the Masonic orders, to the Knights, which all link back to Jesuitism. Like I said, get, uh, us getting a mortgage, a death pledge, you know, it says, uh, oh, no man, nothing but to love one another. 
Yeah. And <clears throat> we don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what we're going to do. My wife and I have been looking here and there at houses to rent, uh, where to go, an apartment, but the, um, the prices in this, in this area are just so outrageous. And getting up and moving out of state financially is something that we can't do. So let's see what the Lord has in store for us. But um, I want to read to you some scriptures. Get your King James Bible, the real Bible, and turn in your King James Bible to Philippians chapter 3. Go there in the scriptures. Okay. Philippians chapter 3. We will be reading from verses 7 on to verse 11. Now, from verses 1 on to verse 6, Paul is describing that he has no confidence in the flesh. In the, style, in the thing that he, you know, in the, in the things of the law, that he was circumcised, that he, um, that he was a Pharisee, that he persecuted the church, and that as touching the law, he was blameless. <coughs> but, um, well, I'll read this to you. Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 on to verse 11. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. Now, Paul was a Pharisee. He persecuted the church, the church of the living God. And he could have been a somebody within the sect of the Pharisees, I'm sure. He probably could have had a really good, comfortable life. But Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. You know, when you look around at your stuff, it's just stuff. It's just stuff. Let's continue. Verse 9, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. See all those things that Paul had. He counted them but done. And he suffered the loss of those things that he may win Christ. He, that he could know Christ. That Christ could be his all in all. Philippians chapter 4, verses 12, verse 11, on to verse 13. Philippians 4, verses 11, on to verse 13. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. 
Now, a lot of people like to take that <clears throat> and apply that in an inappropriate way when they're going after their greed, when they are trying to live above their means. But with that, you got to remember verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I have need right here in verse 19, Philippians chapter 4, circled. See? But my God shall supply all your need, not your greed. Amen. And also, too, we got to remember 1 Timothy chapter 6. <clears throat> Verses 6 on to verse 8. First uh, Timothy 6, verses 6 on to verse 8. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content, food and clothing. There are some things you have to keep in mind about Paul. Number one, Paul was a single man. I believe, I personally believe, that Paul was a virgin. I really do. Some like to say that in order to be a Pharisee, he had to have a wife. Chapter and verse on that one, please. Okay? <clears throat> but I personally believe that Paul was a virgin. I also believe that, um, well, Paul didn't really have the problems of a, not the problems, excuse me, excuse me, but Paul didn't have a wife to take care of, a child or a son or a daughter to take care of, even though he did have those whom he considered his sons in a way like Timothy was, you know. But um, Paul didn't have those things like a wife and children. He was by himself. He worked with his own hands. You got to keep that in mind. Paul didn't have those things. That's, you know, always have to remember that about Paul. You know, just saying. The truth is truth. Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Brass tax, just what you need, not what you greed. Notice, I notice, I'm looking at myself. Hi. Hi. <coughs> also, too, 1 Corinthians, chapter 4. First Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse 13. 1 Corinthians 4, chapter, uh, chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse 13. For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels and to men. Yeah. Yeah. What has your faith in Jesus Christ got you, Brad? You ever run into that one yet, brethren? Hmm? Look at how you're living, Brad. Is that, how, is that how much your God really cares for you? <laughs> no, 
what I'm saying? And that's where them filthy, disgusting prosperity people come in. Like the Osteens and that, uh, what's his name? Who uh, rebuked the Poison Crown. Oh, I can't think of his name. Co uh, Copeland. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, listen, if any of you, then you might say brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God, you, you, of course, but if you happen upon this video and you're, you think those guys are of the Church of the Living God, you have some issues, okay? You, you, you're not right in your head. Um, you might have to go put your head in a bucket of cold water and leave it there for a little bit while and soak it, okay? Just saying. Let's continue. Verse 10, we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. That's called sarcasm. Paul's being sarcastic a little bit. Let's continue. Even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and have no certain dwelling place. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. And remember, all who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. No certain dwelling place. Very interesting. Very interesting. Luke chapter 9. Very quick, just one verse. Luke chapter 9, verse 58. Luke chapter 9, excuse me, verses 57 and 58. Luke 9, 57 and 58. And it came to pass that, as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. God manifests in the flesh, the Father. These three are one, spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost was the spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, the body, spirit, soul, and body. These three are one God, just one person, one God. Okay? And, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. No certain dwelling place. Hmm. And these wicked prosperity people, they think they're better than the Lord Jesus Christ. They think they're better than the Apostle Paul. I've even heard people say that Paul just didn't have enough faith, or else he would have probably been doing a lot better for himself. Yeah, I've actually heard that. <clears throat> Let's continue, though, here in Luke, from verses 59 on to verse 50, uh, 62. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, 
but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Remember Lot's wife? Yeah. Remember Lot's wife? I'm asking you. I know that's what the Lord said. Remember Lot's wife. But remember her? When they were, when the angels let them out of Sodom, Lot's wife looked back. She became a pillar of salt. The looking back was that the angels were taking Lot out before the angels destroyed Sodom, a type of the catching away of the body of Christ being let out before it gets destroyed. I am saying, <clears throat> but she looked back and became a pillar of salt. Looking back at what she was leaving, a yearning for it, you could say. No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You know, when you get saved and born again, what's back there is back there. You go forward, you see. You go forward. Back now to Philippians, while we have that hanging in the air. <coughs> Philippians chapter 3. Not Ephesians, Brad, beg your pardon. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 3. Verse 13 and 14. Brethren. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, and I have one circle there, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> no man uh, putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. I think personally, brethren, you know how the Lord gives that parable about the seeds? and sown on stony ground and among thorns and sown on the good ground and stuff like that. There are some people right away who, when they hear the word, they receive it with joy, but when persecution cometh, they fall back. They, they look back. Remember Lot's wife? Because when they realize what it costs them, There are some of you who may see this, who I know for certain might have thought you knew what the cost would be. But then when you go through it, it was a little bit more than you imagined, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Especially with the catching away coming so close, so rapidly. <clears throat> and all the nonsense we're seeing nowadays. Then I come home to that. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
2 Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verses 19 on to verse 30. Second <clears throat> Corinthians chapter 11 verses 19 on to verse 30. For ye suffer fools gladly. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. That is the biblical definition of what a fool is. Seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage. <laughs> Social distance. But ye yourselves are wise. If a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face, <laughs> I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. Howbeit, wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measures, in above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths off. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, <laughs> in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides the, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is offended, and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. Mine infirmities. You know what, brethren? Personally, I have no confidence in this, in me. I have no trust, faith, or confidence in myself. But I trust the Lord. Even though I don't know what he's doing. But I know he's doing. Brethren, um, please pray for myself and my wife. We have nothing. And it is our fault. It is our fault. We have tried hard not to live beyond our means, but in reality, even though the bills get paid, the rent gets paid, which is going to be futile here soon. Just so you know, I'm on the 12th this Friday, I have to drive the rent out to pay for the month 
and I'm also considering with what's going on that, you know, at any given moment, someone can buy this house and we would have 30 days to get out. And my wife and I have been doing little things, you know, trying to downsize, throw out stuff to get ready. But, you know, trying to find a new place, especially around here, with what little we have, which is nothing, it's hard, man. It's really hard. And something that I struggle with is um, <clears throat> there are people out there far better than me, far better than us, far better, who have less. There are people out there who will receive many crowns and have nothing. There are those that have nothing but yet have great riches, meaning spiritual, of course. And there are those who have much riches and have absolutely nothing. I just paraphrase that. Beg your pardon. But see, I know that there are people out there who are far better than I ever have been or ever will be, who have done far more for the Lord. You don't even know their names. I don't even know their names, but the Lord does. As if that matters, it's the Lord knows, but we don't know. And the Lord has been so merciful, so gracious to my wife and I. Originally, when we moved in here, you know, they wanted like, what, uh, 1300 a month. We started out paying 725 a month, but then now we are paying 850 Like I said, um, this Friday, I got to drive the rent out there to the landlady, which with what's coming with the for sale sign out there and the fact that um, the real estate lady was really keeping us out of the loop. But then again, we can't, we're, we can't get it. We can't get a loan and we won't get a loan. And as far as trying to get a mortgage, a death pledge, boom, ain't gonna happen. Oh, no man, nothing. Oh, oh, oh no man, anything. And like I've, I've said, I have a very close affinity with the homeless. I witness a lot to the homeless. I do. Because I have always known the one thing that separates me from a homeless individual is one paycheck. And when we, when we lose the house and we don't have a place, my wife would never make it. My wife would never survive being homeless. And it's my job to provide for my wife. And I'm doing what I can as a husband. But with all the inflation and all the craziness that's going on right now, my wife would never, my Sue would never make it. When we lose this house and the Lord hasn't given us place or we haven't found one um, her side of the family would probably take her in if that were to be the case rather than her having to be out on the streets with her husband because she, she'd never make it I could make it for a little while Lord willing. But 
הפצה. Brethren, could you pray for us, Sue and I? However the, the Lord, the Holy Ghost, you know, the Lord is that spirit. However the Lord would guide you to pray, please do. It's all we want. The Lord will open doors and, you know, take that proverbial spiritual brick and <clears throat> open my eyes, open doors. Maybe he's shown me something that I hadn't seen it yet. I don't know. Been praying about this for quite a while. And whenever we look, whenever we talk, there's just something not there. Those of you who are saved, who has, you know, who have the Lord within you, you'll know what I'm talking about. So, brethren, um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I do trust the Lord. Please pray for us. In light of what I've learned today and how dire our situation is here for us personally, but yet today, Today we have electricity, you can see, and today we have, you know, we got food in the fridge, bed to sleep in. Don't know about tomorrow. Just pray for us, please. Please. As we pray for many of you, please pray for us. That's all. That's all. Brethren, I really don't know to either if another video is going to come now for a while until, until we see what the Lord will do. Because I trust the Lord will provide our need. And you know what? If it is, if it is His desire, we, we are going to lose this house. We are. And what with what we both make and the rent, I mean, like I said, looking online, we around here, you know, my, my wife can't do a place that has stairs. So an apartment and on a third floor, she can't do that. Um, and other and also to, um, like I said, $1,300 is the average for a place around here and getting out of state would uh, <laughs> pray for us please please pray for us with this said I don't know when or if a video is going to come after this video I don't know it's up to the Lord. I've mentioned it to a couple brethren that um, I am kind of sitting on this rather big video about the Jesuits. Um, but I don't know. No, I don't know. Got to seek the Lord and see what's going to happen. But let me share some one more quick thing with you before I go because it's uh, 8 19 and I do got to go to work tomorrow <clears throat> I want to share something with you personal some per something personal very early in my walk I've only been saved for 12 years very early in my walk with the Lord I know that the Lord made me a promise. I know he did.
Go to my favorite book in the Bible, Jeremiah, chapter 45. Jeremiah, chapter 45. We're going to read this whole chapter. Hopefully you can handle that. <laughs> Like I said, very early in my walk with the Lord. I know I know what the context is. I know about the dispensational thing. But I also know that Lord did promise me this personally in the book of Jeremiah. And now the Lord said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. God is always with you. Yes, you are sealed. Yes. Jeremiah chapter 45. Hopefully we can get this done within the next five minutes, huh? The word that Jeremiah the prophet spake unto Baruch, the son of Neriah, when he had written these words in a book at the mouth of Jeremiah, in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, unto thee, O Baruch, Thou didst say, Woe is me now, for the Lord hath added grief to my sorrow. I fainted in my sight. And I find no rest. Thus shalt thou say unto him, The Lord saith thus, Behold, that which I have built will I break down, and that which I have planted I will pluck up, even this whole land. And seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. For behold, I will bring evil upon all flesh, saith the Lord. Right there. Right there. But thy life will I give unto thee for prey in all places whither thou goest. But thy life will I give unto thee for a prey in all places whither thou goest. Doesn't mean uh, uh, bulletproof, but it was, uh, you know, it's all right now. And you, as a believer of the Church of the Living God, you might, the Lord might have you to be a martyr. The Lord might have you to lose all things, that you may come to know Christ more perfectly. Because you know one th thing too about that, when I think about it, all this stuff, all this stuff, strip the meat off them bones to where it's just you and the Lord. But you have to depend on him alone. Because brethren, I'll tell you what. Unless the Lord do something. It ain't looking too good. So please pray for us. Please keep us in your prayers. We need it. I don't know now with, uh, with what has happened this day. I do not know when or if the next video will come. I do not know. I do not know. I really don't. <clears throat> the Lord, you know, with the Jesuit video, um, the Lord could be like, Brad, it's like, okay, okay. But it's totally up to the Lord. Like I said, this I have no confidence, faith, or trust in.
this you can trust. I trust the Lord. So, anyway, like I said, I, I have no idea what to do, how to go about it. So, uh, please keep us in your prayers. And whatever the Lord will, <laughs> thy will be done. So if you don't see a video for a while, now you know why. But if one comes, thy will be done. Take it easy there, brethren. Keep them ears open. I love you.